So you started a blog to make life-changing money. Well, you can accomplish a lot within a year. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the first 365 days of your blog and exactly what to do. So we all start blogs with an end goal in mind. So we have different life goals and things that we wanna achieve, passive income, time freedom, you know, $5,000 a month, Whatever we want to achieve, we can do it. But when we start these businesses, we have an end goal in mind. We start them on the side of our full-time jobs when we have to focus on the right things to build passive income the fastest. So with these time constraints, with working and building this, we have to maximize the effective use of our time. So the first 90 days in another video I covered is to learn as much as possible and do everything yourself so that in the first 365 days, the first year, you can master all areas of this and begin your outsourcing and monetization with the end goal in the first year of creating a profit runway and replacing your salary so that you can maybe quit your job in 12 months. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the blog's first 365 days, exactly what to do from a content, link building, and monetization standpoint. So by the end of this video, you'll have a good action plan for exactly what to do in your blog's first year. But before we get started, I want to invite you to watch my free online business masterclass it covers how I make $300,000 a month with my online business. Thousands of students have gone through it. Make sure to click the link, sign up for that, and let's get into the topic for today. So in the first year of blogging, we have to remember that there are two paths and two primary disciplines when it comes to blogging. The first one is content. So that's your on-page, you know, what you're actually writing on your blog, your articles, your actual blog posts. So that's keyword research, content writing, and on-page SEO with the goal of publishing content. And the other side, we have link building. So guest blogging, partnerships, off-page SEO with the goal of getting links. So those are the two things that you need to master first. So your 365-day plan begins with keyword research because we have to write things that people are actually searching for to get traffic and make money. So what we do first is we start adding keywords in blog post ideas into your content calendar. And what we do is we want to find new and emerging products in your niche to write about for affiliate revenue and high volume, low competition in your, uh, in your niche for ad revenue. So we want to stay ahead of the content calendar by finding these transactional best posts to write and informational how to posts to write. And then some other ones we mix in ideas, posts, really long lists and unique stories to make your blog stand out. So let's cover quickly how to find some of these. So I'm using Ahrefs in the keyword explorer and I put in best plus a niche, like let's, I just put in fishing for example. And then I use the matching terms tool to find things that match the term best and fishing. So any keyword in there that does that. And we can see a number of good opportunities here to write articles to make affiliate revenue. So if there's things like best fishing kayaks, best fishing lines, best fishing sunglasses, knots, fishing rods, poles, all of those things, then we can see the difficulty. We can sort it by that. We can, you know, maybe we want to only make a keyword difficulty up to 20. So things that are easier to rank for, and we can find all these different fishing, you know, transactional posts to write. So that could be a good niche. Or we go into something like uh, how to posts, uh, informational posts. So what about gardening? So I just put in how to garden. And there's a lot of uh, informational content you could write if you have a gardening blog about like how to build a raised garden bed, how to keep squirrels out, rabbits out, how to keep deer out, how to do that. And then you can also do something like best garden and you can start finding transactional posts for affiliate revenue, these list posts where you list the stuff and make affiliate commissions. So there's things like best mulch for vegetable garden, best raised garden beds, hose reels, expandable garden hose, hose nozzles, flexible gardening tools. So you just look at your niche with best for transactional posts and then how to for informational posts. And you do a mixture of these and you start just adding them in a spreadsheet. So you can start planning maybe 10 or 20 posts ahead based on what you can actually rank for. Another good one is like ideas posts. So everyone has ideas. The internet is full of beginners. When people are looking for how to do stuff and best products, they're pretty much beginners. And it all starts with people coming up with ideas. So we want to find high volume posts for ad revenue as well. And idea posts are good for that. So we see things like dinner ideas, gender reveal ideas, painting ideas. So living room ideas. So we see when I pull up living room ideas, we get all kinds of different posts that we could write that have a lot of search volume every month and could make good ad revenue. So we have like gray living room ideas, farmhouse living room ideas, living room wall decor ideas, color ideas, paint ideas, ideas with TV, all of these different posts that come up with ideas. Every niche has ideas or different things that they search for. So for example, if you're in the fitness niche, that could be ideas, could be like exercises. So what exercises are we gonna write about? Well, a lot of them are more competitive. Kegel exercise is number one, that's kind of awkward. But uh, you know, we have a lot of different ones in here and we can base it on the keyword difficulty. So let's look at anything under 30 to see what's a little bit easier to rank for. And then we have things like rear delt exercises, dumbbell back exercises, tricep, inner thigh, lat, gluteus medius, trap, jawline, hip flexor, all of those things. So we begin to develop our content calendar. This is the first step in your blogging journey is to create a content plan. What are you actually gonna write? And building that just with a simple spreadsheet, creating these best posts in your niche, how to posts in your niche, and some ideas posts in your niche is a great way to get started. And you need all three of those. 
So we have some writing goals for the first year. What are those? Well, a yearly goal could be to publish 52 2,000 word articles. So that's one article per week. Not that difficult. When we think about it, that's 104,000 words in 365 days, which is about 284 words a day. So that's less than one page double spaced. So remember here, we are assembling content the exact same way every single time. So whether it is a best post, like best fishing rods, or it's a how to fish post, life is in a list. So there's always a set of you know, steps in any blog post and you can templatize and create the exact same format every single time. That's what I teach in my course, the exact templates and blueprints to create this content. You know, when you're doing a list post and you have companies in a list, you're gonna do company one, picture, features, pricing, all of that, and just do it the same way every single time down the list. So blogging is more about assembling content than writing it uniquely every time. Now we want to use Surfer SEO to optimize the on-page SEO. So when we're creating it, we have our target keyword. We come up with that first with Ahrefs. Now Ahrefs is about $100 a month. So you can either, I get a lot of questions on, do I need Ahrefs? It is the best SEO tool. There's no free alternative out there that does what it does. But you could do something like, you know, buy it for a month, do all of your keyword research for six months and then cancel. But I challenge you that, you know, if you can't spend $100 on Ahrefs, we shouldn't be aiming for a bunch of money in this online business. But Surfer SEO is the first one that you would need, the first like ongoing, content writing tool that you would need when you're uh, running your blogging business. So here's an example of Surfer SEO. Here's one that I wrote on how to choose project management software. So the article, that's the target keyword. And then you can see as you're writing, you can write right within Surfer SEO and you can start writing here and it gives you a content score. It gives you a content structure score and then it gives you all the terms. So it gives you all the semantic keywords to write about. So when we want to rank content on Google, we have to realize that Google is based on AI and machine learning and they scan articles and they expect to see different words. So even in something like how to choose project management software, we would think, well, how many times do I add project management software? How many times do I add how to? How many times do I add tools, features, whatever? Surfer SEO gives you the exact number of times that you want to add this. So project management software is typically in there 29 times. That seems kind of like a lot. You might not need it that many times, but you want to start looking at these different semantic keywords and just making sure that you add them into your article. Because Google scans this and they're like, huh, this has all these different variations. It has things like managing tasks, project dashboards, Gantt charts, decision-making process. And it starts to think, wow, this is definitely the best article. It has all these thematically related words in it. So it also gives you you know, all the keywords to add and how many times to add them. It gives you how many paragraphs there are. It gives you the headings that you should, amount of headings you should have, number of images you should have. You can also look at what, what should the headings be. There's also a natural language processing tool here. And it also can give you an outline, different titles based on what's ranking and looking at the competition and what's currently ranking. So what Surfer SEO and these AI tools do is they took it, look at the top certain number of sites and they start making assumptions based on that data. And they like, let's just say they scan the first 30 ranking sites and then compile that information to see what Google is rewarding. So it's not perfect, but by adding these keywords in as you're writing, you will rank for a lot more content. Most smaller niche sites too are not using tools like Surfer as much. So you can really outrank a lot of sites with better on-page SEO. So we wanna make sure that we're always using Surfer to optimize the on-page SEO. Then we publish our articles. So we publish articles based on things that you can rank for and start obtaining traffic. So we wanna do our keyword research. We do all of our on-page SEO. We make sure that the keyword is in the URL. It's in the H1 title. It's in the intro. It's in the first H2 heading in the form of a question. It's throughout the content. We use Surfer SEO, we publish it. Now we start seeing, is this gonna start ranking? When you start your blog, you're not gonna rank everything on page one right away. You might start on page four, page eight, page six. It's really hard to say, but the more you start creating content and blanketing a niche, the more uh, traffic you start trickling in and obtaining, you can get out of the Google sandbox by finding these you know, keyword opportunities with Ahrefs that are like difficulty under 10. You can start to see low ranking, low authority sites on page one that you can actually beat. And then you can start getting traffic in that niche area. And then you can start expanding out, expanding out and ranking for more competitive things. Basically you publish the articles. Now we need to talk about that, uh, the other side, which is link building. So yes, we publish content. We do it based on AI, good writing, SEO, keywords that can make us money. Then we want to talk about link building because that's the other biggest on page, uh, biggest ranking factor in Google's eyes is how many links are actually pointing to your site. Google wants to rank uh, trustworthy content. And the best way to do that is just what websites are trustworthy, what actually have links pointing to them. So I'd say a yearly goal, a good yearly goal is to obtain 52 high quality backlinks. So that's basically one a week. And this is definitely possible based on some outreach. And this is done through guest blogging. It's done with link partnerships and just build, basically outreach that's done on LinkedIn and email. So it's not that difficult. It's kind of scary to some people because they don't like putting themselves out there. It's very safe and okay to start writing content on your blog. But when you have to start putting yourself out there and doing link building and you know asking for stuff and asking for guest posts, it gets a little bit uncomfortable. But 
I challenge you, it's not that hard. You just have to do it and kind of separate your identity from that message. So you have to be okay with a lot of people saying no or not responding to you. And it's totally fine. You have to push this thing forward yourself. No one is going to help you. At one point in my blog's first year, um, I was doing probably 10 guest posts a month. So I had scaled the process out where I was, you know, doing lots of outreach. I had an assistant helping me with outreach. We were doing outreach for guest posts and I was doing 10 to 12 to 15 guest posts a month. So one a week is very possible. You just have to start thinking a little bit differently when it comes to link building. And I have other videos on that on my channel that cover the exact step-by-step -step process. But really months one through three early in your blog. So again, there's two tracks of blogging, content and link building. Early on in your blog in your first months, we really have to hone in on this outbound process and approach, and that's creating your email templates. So for example, if you're going to reach out to a site for a guest post, what sites do you reach out to and what do you say? Well, if I'm in the camping niche, maybe I'd want to reach out to sites like REI or Switchback Travel or sites in the travel niche that I might be able to guest post for. And when I do that, I need to know what am I going to say to them? So we have to come up with our own unique value proposition and what we're going to say. So they could be like, hello, my name is Adam. I started a blog in this niche at my domain name.com. You, you know, you really want to be somewhat truthful here and, and trustworthy and just say where you're at in your journey. Say that you want to collaborate on content. You do a number of guest posts a month. You start doing this kind of outreach and just building real relationships with people, being honest. It's not about, you know, some specific link building tactic where you're like, add this link to this post. You have to really build a relationship with people and start, you know, doing this broad outreach approach that I teach in other videos where you can just start building relationships, seeing who else is doing guest posts, seeing who you can partner with, seeing who says yes, what types of sites to work with. But the first months are kind of just honing in on that process and trying to start understanding what works for you. Then months four through six can be mastering the guest posting process. So again, I have another video on specifically guest blogging. It's, you know, step by step, the nine steps and all of that. But we want to start mastering the process. And then by months seven through 12, we begin outsourcing some of this so we don't have to do it all ourselves. So now let's talk about monetization because we do want to make money with our blog as quickly as possible. So what do we do and where does that start? Well, monetization is a byproduct of traffic and traffic is a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. So you create good content with on-page SEO. You get links to some of your articles. You start ranking, you start getting traffic. That's when you can start monetizing. We can't monetize before we get traffic. Now, affiliate revenue goes back to your initial keyword research and what you're actually ranking for. So the keywords you target based on transactional posts and your ad revenue goes back to your initial keyword research as well and what you're ranking for with these high volume ideas and other types of posts. So for months one through three, you should really only focus on keyword research and traffic. Don't worry about monetization yet. Don't worry about affiliate programs or joining AdSense or any of that yet necessarily. Yeah, you can, but we just don't want to take too much time away from the content and link building that we're doing. So really the focus in months one through three should only be on content and link building. Then months four through six, that's when we can start joining affiliate programs. So maybe you're starting to rank on page two or three, maybe even page one for a couple of these best transactional posts. You can start then monetizing by joining affiliate programs for the companies or products in your list, trying to get and swap the uh, links on the first like three products in your post. So then you can start joining affiliate programs and just keep joining them. You can join them, fill out the forms, uh, start bookmarking them. There's not like a great tool that I've found that is like a compiles all of them in one place because there's just so many integrations needed for that. But you can bookmark them and just start kind of keeping track of all your affiliate links. Use a tool like Thirsty Affiliates to manage these affiliate links. It's really good with WordPress and you can use that. But joining affiliate programs never really ends. You always want to keep joining them. Uh, I'm in over 300 and we still join them every month if there's a new post that's ranking. So then months through uh, seven through 12, you want to just keep joining more affiliate programs. You begin making money and then you want to join an ad network once traffic gets to 10,000 visitors a month um, outside of AdSense. So you can join Azoic early on. Uh, you can join Mediavine or AdThrive later on with higher traffic numbers. But we want to just join something outside of AdSense because we can make a lot more money from an RPM standpoint doing that. So this is kind of what it looks like in the yearly system. So from a content perspective, if we're doing uh, 52 blog posts a year, it's basically 13 blog posts every three months, and we're consistently doing this. This does not end. And then maybe at months, you know, we can do this earlier or later, but we want to hire our first writer. So I have videos on exactly how to hire and scale your writers and what to do and how, what to look for and how to train them and where to post the job and all of that. But we want to possibly hire this because this number, this 13 every three months, you know, this 52 a year, you can do that one a week yourself, or you can start outsourcing it based on trickling in some revenue and ad revenue and investing it back in your business. So with link building, again, this is what it looks like. First three months, a lot of research and development, planning your messaging, starting to send them out. And then months four through six, you begin this process too. And really this is all it takes on a daily basis is like five outreaches per day. So if we say that, you know, a good guest posting, uh, you know, acceptance rate or a good like 
link building acceptance rate of you know asking and sending email outreaches and getting responses is say like five percent well then we might need to send 20 messages to get one backlink so that could be you know four days times five messages a day to get one backlink so it's a numbers game and not everybody's going to answer you not everyone's going to say yes but you can follow up as well so you should do like an automated follow-up potentially at days three or seven just to make sure that they're getting your emails and messages so you just keep doing this you just keep doing your outreach and then you can get on haro help a reporter out start checking for those things adding uh re ad answering queries to start you know potentially getting backlinks from other publications and the month seven through nine just continued this outreach and mastered the guest blogging process and then later on you can begin to try to outsource this so i outsourced it at month six by hiring a link building assistant who did all of the outreach pitching topics and all of that for me on my behalf but you can this is uh, a thing that you can learn as you go and then for monetization, again, months one through three, don't worry about it. Months four through six, begin joining affiliate programs, then keep joining affiliate programs, then keep joining more affiliate programs, swapping in those links, monetizing it more, add an, join an ad network, and you know start monetizing with ads. But focus on getting your traffic to 10,000 visitors a month. That should come before anything else. And these processes, they never really stop. The key is just to learn as much as possible. So on the content side, you're always gonna be publishing more. The link building side, you're always gonna be doing more link building. And then you start building leverage into your life in the first year of your blog. And you just start comparing yourself to bigger sites. So some sites out there like Tom's Guide or Tech Radar or big media sites might publish 30 articles a day for all I know. But you just keep publishing, you know, investing back in your business, making more money, and really just learning as much as possible is the key in your blog's first year. We're going to make a lot of mistakes, and that's totally okay because a blog is infinitely updatable, unlike other things. So it's okay to make mistakes, but we want to build this business in the background of our life while we're working full time, something based on our own unique identity and the niche that we choose. Not some tiny niche site, but something that will serve our life and we can pivot and adapt our content and we will never quit. And the key is just to learn as much as possible, make mistakes, go ahead and do it, but just start taking action. So by the end of your, your blog's first 365 days, you ha should have 52 blog posts on your site, 52 high quality backlinks, be in at least 20 affiliate programs, join an ad network, and your goal here could be to make $5,000 a month from something like 50,000 visitors a month. Now I'm just making up these numbers somewhat, but that is totally Really achievable within a year if you follow the right strategy and put time in maybe even just 10 hours a week outside of your full-time job so five thousand dollars a month is totally achievable it just takes real work to get there it takes honing in on the strategy believing in it and not quitting that's why a lot of people quit they just don't want to put work in for three months six months nine months if they don't if they aren't guaranteed success but we have to stop chasing the shiny objects focus on one thing focus on the strategy and do it over a course of time and once you do, there's no ceiling to your revenue. So the first 5K is the hardest. Like getting your blog, your first backlinks, you know, your first momentum is the hardest part. But once you can push through that, and if you can make it to $5,000 a month, you will make it to 10, you will make it to 20, you can make it to 40 and higher and 100 and whatever you want to do, the first part is the hardest. So it's really just pushing through, setting goals, working a little bit every day on your blog for the first year and focusing on the right things at the right time. So if that was interesting to you, if you want to learn more about how I make $300,000 a month with my blog and YouTube channel, make sure to click the link in the description below. Watch that uh, free training. 60 minutes condenses all my knowledge down into like the best possible training I could do. It's totally free to watch. So give it a watch. Please like this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, is this video helpful in your blog's first year? Please, you know, comment with any questions you have on blogging and I will see you in the next video.